Welcome to KJV Home Bible Study from the Man Cave. This is JC Ligar with Dunia and Chloe Ligar, and today we are going to continue with the Gospel of Matthew. This will be part 120 through 122. But, Dunia and Chloe, what do I need to do before I do anything? Pray. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you so much, God, for today. Lord, I also want to thank you that you've given me back my Sundays off at work. So now me and my beautiful wife and daughter can go to church on Sunday and worship you, Lord. And I'm just overjoyed starting November 7th. Oh, I'm so happy, Lord. And I want to thank you, Lord, for the church that I've been going to at uh, Valley on Wednesdays. They've been a blessing while I haven't been able to go to Calvary, but it's good to be home now. Father, I pray the Holy Spirit will fill me and help me to teach this topic in a way that is clear and understandable and everybody can be blessed. I pray in the name of Jesus and everybody said, Amen. Amen. We are in... Matthew 18. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them. And he said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever, therefore, shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But Whosoever shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. So real quickly, I want to touch on what Jesus is saying here about us becoming as little children. What is cool is they were preaching this very topic yesterday at Calvary Chapel. So I was listening to Pastor Brendan and taking notes, and he brought forth that a child looks to their parent for, let's see, for provision. We depend on God to give us our food, our clothes, our daily needs. You know, if we're sick, we look to our God, God heal us. So we're looking to God for all those things like a little child would to their parents. You know, a little child doesn't worry about the bills being paid or where is his meal going to come from. He looks to their parent, he or she. And mom, I'm hungry, dad, I'm thirsty. You know, mom, dad, I'm cold. You know, can you give me something warm to wear? A child looks to the parent. And in the same way, we as children, we look to God for our needs and our salvation. Another one is protection. A child looks to mom and dad to protect them from strangers. You know, if somebody comes, you know, the child should feel safe knowing that mom and dad are near to protect them because we have evil in this world. And hear what Jesus is saying, but whosoever shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone be hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depths of the sea. I'm feeling that God is talking here to pedophiles, those who would abuse a child, an innocent, and try to rob them of their innocence. A 
if you don't repent of that evil and you die in that sin, hell will be so hot for you. So I'm pleading, if you are a pedophile, you need to turn yourself in. You need to go to the police and confess what you've done and face the consequences of what you've done. In the same way, if I'm a bank robber and I become a Christian and I feel bad for what I've done, I ask God to forgive me, great, He will forgive me, but I need to turn myself in and I need to do the time that the law will demand of me. It could be the rest of my life, who knows? But if you're truly repentant, which I pray God will bring you to repentance, then turn yourself in and confess what you've done and face the consequence. But if you don't and you choose to harden your heart and you will die in your sin, let's see what the next page has to offer. Not pretty. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye, rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you, that in heaven their angels always do behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. All right, real quick, we're going to look at two verses that I also want to touch upon. In Proverb 6.16, right here, These six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. The next one is Proverb 24, 11. For if thou, well, I'm sorry, if thou forbear to deliver them, that are drawn unto death, and those that are ready to be slain. If thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not, does not he that ponders the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, does not he know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his works? So real quick, I want to touch on the topic of abortion, the shedding of innocent blood. Now, before I was a Christian, I lived an ungodly life, and I had sexual relations with three women who I got pregnant, and all three chose to abort the baby. Now, they didn't ask my advice, my permission. They didn't include me in the thing. They just went out and did it. Now, because I committed fornication with them, I am still partially responsible for what they chose to do as much as they are. As a Christian, I've come to God and I've asked for forgiveness. And He has forgiven me. 
He loves me and has forgiven me of all my sins because I've trusted in the shed blood of Jesus that washes away my sin. And I implore you, if you've had an abortion, God will forgive you too. It is not too late. As long as you are alive and there is breath, you can ask God to have mercy upon your soul, to be forgiving. And, but you need to own up to what you've done. If you've had an abortion, you go to God say, God, I've shed innocent blood. I'm sorry. He will forgive you. He is merciful. He is gracious. But if you die in your sin, you will have to give an account for the shedding of innocent blood. So again, come to Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can get to the Father but by Him. But again, please I implore you, if you've been a pedophile, if you've shed innocent blood, you need to go to the authorities, confess your sin, confess your crime, and deal with the consequences, and come to Christ, because there are good prison ministries. There are lots of people in prison that have turned their lives around, and they are serving God today even behind bars. But again, this is something that God will have to convict you of, and to bring you to a place of repentance. I pray he does, because I'd rather spend years on earth in jail than eternity in hell. It's a pretty hard topic to talk about today. I'd, I'd like to say some nice things, but this is where God has us today. JC Ligar with Dooney and Chloe Ligar, I hope you will join us next time as we study the Gospel of Matthew. Have a good day and God bless. Bye-bye.